A group that works to protect religious liberties here in the U.S. also works overseas. Jordan Seculo with the American Center for Law and Justice is in Moscow tonight. He joins us now via Skype. Jordan, uh, what kind of work does the ACLJ do in Russia? You know, we've been working here, Lee, for over a decade, and I'm in Moscow this week because Christmas is not celebrating here until after the new year, so it's a working week, a good time to see the Slavic Center for Law and Justice. Our offices are right uh, not too far from behind me is the Kremlin and Red Square, and we're right around the corner uh, like we are in Washington, D.C. by the Supreme Court. So it's actually one of our longest operating uh, offices overseas with a full staff, very independent uh, from the ACLJ, has big victories here in the Russia Constitutional Court, like our Supreme Court, and at the European Court of Human Rights. They've won some of the biggest cases we've had internationally. Jordan, uh, what, what's the atmosphere like there in the former Soviet Union? Do Christians there face the same legal challenges as, as we do here in the U.S.? You know, it's still a very developing democracy, but you, what you do have is a strong Orthodox Church. So what, what's been interesting to me, and I put in some of the photos I sent to uh, CBN News and have been taking, is that of all the Christmas controversies we deal with in the United States, uh, you know, Lenin's mausoleum, Red Square, and there's big Christmas trees and crosses, and the government's building uh, Greek Orthodox churches. But evangelicals, new religious faiths, as they would be classified here, uh, uh, new Protestant faiths, uh, pastors coming in from outside Russia, uh, setting up very big churches. There are still a, a lot of legal issues here, and you've got you know a country which is uh, experiencing their first protest wave, if you could call it that, since 1993, really since the fall of communism. Uh, because you've had the same leadership uh, that the uh, a now prime minister who will likely become president again of uh, Vladimir Putin. And because I think people are waking up and saying, is this really a democracy? And we have some rights, but but we do. We go to court a lot. The, the, some issues are similar, but Russia is spread out in a, in a very different way than the United States. But we have been uh, doing work a long time. And I wanted to remind people, uh, especially because we focus on so many different areas, that We've been in Russia, and we are yeah. in Russia, and uh, and we visit frequently and work with the team closely here. Yeah, you mentioned those protests and the attempts to uh, to to let Vladimir Putin know that uh, may, maybe he's wearing out his welcome. What do you sense there in terms of the political landscape? Are you encouraged by those protests, and and will they carry any weight? You know, I think it, it's interestingly in the U.S. when we have these protest wave, whether it's the Tea Party or Occupy Wall Street, they're both centered around at least having uh, you know, an opposing, some, a candidate, someone who could take your message to government. Mm -hmm. And what you don't have here is necessarily people getting behind another person. Uh, they have a lot of grievances with uh, the current administration. I do think any democracy, people can take to the streets in a peaceful way, uh, which these protests have been for the most part. Uh, it's just very safe here in Moscow. It's a great place to be. The government's listened to some of their uh, concerns. But Right now, from everything I read in the press here, which is, uh, you know, and, and just talking to our staff, there isn't someone who is going to serious, ch seriously challenge at this point uh, uh, Prime Minister Putin in March, the March presidential election just around the corner. So I think this is more about standing up and demanding changes for the future rather than a, a mix up at the top. Uh, in this election cycle. Well, keep us posted on the political climate as well as what the ACLJ is doing, even via Skype, uh, Jordan. That's an impressive uh, sight behind you with the Kremlin. I'm sure Moscow in the wintertime is a, is a beautiful place to be. It is beautiful. And we actually have a U.S. website. People can go to sclj.org for the Slavic Center to see what they're doing. They update it regularly. It's a good site to also see at sclj.org. Thanks for having me, Lee. Thank you, Jordan. Merry Christmas and, and Happy New Year.